I guess, I guess the sort of challenges are sort of changing, and it feels like we're in a sort of moment of change. And you can kind of sense it here at the conference that suddenly there's this wealth of opportunities around mobile and augmented reality and social media and different kinds of websites and different technologies and different ways of working. And so the, the challenge is the challenge is how do you both kind of lead an organization to become more digital and how do you, and how do you how do you respond to what they want and how do you lead them in the right, right direction and I guess we've got I guess we've got kind of different kinds of challenges ahead of us which are less about in a way less about technology and less about uh, design in a purely aesthetic sense and more about designs of experiences and the use of technology to fulfill all kinds of goals from within the organization and and at the same time there aren't going to be there isn't going to be more lots more money and there aren't going to be lots more people in the organization so I mean I think it needs high-level understanding from within organizations that you know, prior, you know, priorities need to be set, and that this thing is more important than than that thing. And in order to 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 do something new, you may need to stop doing something you've done in the past, and you may change your working practices. And the, and that the people in digital departments actually need are going to end up with different kinds of jobs and structures. Uh, that, for example, my job will probably become less about. You know, now that we've launched our website, it'll become less around sort of managing that site and have a very, very, very good team. And they'll probably pick up more of the managing of the, the site. And my role will become much more around working across the organization to around you know, what digital technology can do to fulfill them organization's mission, which is to increase the public's understanding and, and appreciation of art, which is like a nicely vague mission, because in, in, in a sense you could do that without, you know, you could create a website, you could do that without a, without a museum, you could do that purely with a website, and obviously the collection is what gives, is, is what is our heart and the program of exhibitions and, and displays and, and, and events and so on is what is the kind of heartbeat of the heartbeat of the website. Publishing the web strategy. The web strategy was really written for. The, it was written to the. It was presented to the Tate trustees, and it was really an admission that we weren't happy with where we were with our website, and we saw the need for change, and we saw that that change had to be really deep and really fundamental, and it basically meant replacing the entire website, and that was going to be, and not just replacing it like for like, but changing it completely. So that was. It was an internal document in its first instance, and then, it, and then after it was presented, and the the trustees were very positive about it, I said to the the deputy director, I, I think we should publish this. And I'd seen the Smithsonian Institution uh, do their online uh, strategy, which they developed as a wiki, which is a kind of slightly different way of doing it, and probably better in some ways, but. Uh, and I kind of said to him, oh, we should publish this online, but I don't know whether Tate is ready for that. And he said, Tate is definitely ready for it. We, this is absolutely what we should be doing. So, so some of the, you know, the risks and issues were taken out, and then there was a series of principles that were added at the front to kind of give it a, give it a frame. And, and really what I wanted to do was to say, this is the direction that we're going in. And... And really it was to, I mean, lots of people were, you know, they would contact us all the time and say, well, what are you doing? I was like, well, I'm telling the same people lots the same thing over and over again. So why don't we just say explicitly what we're doing? And also it's a way of saying, you know, it's a way of kind of committing ourselves to saying this is what we want to do. Um, and it's really, I think the next version of the web 
or digital strategy, I think will be probably undertaken in, in a more similar way to the way the Smithsonian has done it, which is that it has to be more of a generated from across the organization. And that one was in the sense that there were lots of conversations, but the final document was really written by me. And uh, so, you know, it's also, the other thing that people said about it is it's very detailed. Um, and it says specific things that we will do. And often what you find is that strategies can be too high level. They can be too, they can end up feeling too much that not practical enough. I, mean, I wanted something that was very practical and actually said, uh, we are going to do this and this is what, and we've done many of the things in it, not everything, and one of the things I keep meaning to do is to go through with the document and color code it, green for if I've done it, orange for if I've half done it, and red for if I haven't done it, and to kind of present that internally and say, this is how far we've got. And some of the things that we haven't done are the really difficult things, either for technological reasons. So we were very keen on the, I really wanted there to be a single login to the website so that you could have a single Tate account and that would unlock tickets and the shop and online courses and commenting. And you'll see in the website that's not there. Because that, because it would, have, it's a very complicated integration piece between all of those different systems. Uh, so that didn't make it in there. Uh, the the Creative Commons is coming, but that was a very hard battle to win internally because there's a sense that you know that's a real letting go of your content and an understanding that your audiences have changed. And, you know, and that and that can there's a lot of fear around that because museums can rely on revenue from picture libraries and, and so on. You know, we have to, we've had to communicate over, you know, it's in, in the two years since it's happened, it's only now that we're really getting to a position that we're going to do a trial and for the upcoming digitization projects, we'll start to adopt this and over time, you know, that, that will happen. So, um, a lot of it has been realized in the website relaunch and the rest of it is still to come. Um, But what I hoped would happen is that people in other organizations would use it as a tool for, for change within their organizations in the same way that I'd used it as a tool for change within our organization. And from talking to people, that, that, does, that does seem to have happened. And it seems to have chimed with a lot of people. Uh, you know, I think that, and I think that the sort of 10 principles at the front Although a lot of the specifics are very specific around Tate, I think the 10 principles at the front are broadly applicable to any cultural or heritage organization, and I would encourage them all to do those things. Or die in the attempt. <laughs>